Hello, YouTube. My name's Kimberly, and I'm in charge of developer experience and content creation at Meta AI. Today, we're going to go through a basic getting started example of using Meta AI. You can think of Meta AI as a gateway, a bridge to the next era of AI innovation. With Meta AI, we're not just looking at a single AI solution. We're talking about a framework that seamlessly integrates with a vast array of AI models. This means businesses can connect to the most advanced AI technologies like OpenAI, Google Gemini, and others, including customizable configurations for unique business requirements. This versatility is key for businesses seeking AI-driven solutions tailored to their specific needs. Okay, now I've gotten the pitch out of the way. <laughs> And what I want to do is get into building a pipeline, so guiding you through getting started with using the system. If you're not logged in already, you're going to just click on Try It Now or the Login button at the top right. You're going to be given a form to type in your email address, and then when you type in your email address and hit Enter, it's going to send you a login token and a login link. You can click on either one of those and then log into the system. So to get started, I'm going to hop into my dashboard, and I'm going to click on Create Pipeline. What's it going to say to me is I don't have any nodes. And in order to put a pipeline together, I have to have nodes, and nodes on Meta are created from templates. So in order to create a node, you need to create a template, which you can create multiple nodes off the same template. And then certain variables will be available for changing per node, or if you need to change the template itself, you can then create a, a copy of that template and use it to create another node. So let's get started with that. So I'm going to click on Create Template. And I'm being presented with the first type of template, uh, which is a callback template. And it uses the callback processor to create a node that then takes the data and does a callback to a URL. Now, by default, this callback processor uses an internal callback that then puts the data into the log tab. So let's click on Save. We're going to be given an overview of the template that was just created. We're going to click on it again, and then we're going to click on Create Node. So this has now created a node for this template. And you can see down here the callback URL was populated. And you can do things like this. You can template these variables as well. So you can create a, a variable in here or an extra is what we call them. And then you can use those inside of other extras to template them. Here, the callback token token has been um, secured, so that's not ever returned to us. Although if you want to see what your token is on the system, you can go into settings and, and view that there. But here, we're just uh, being given um, a holder for this. If I wanted to update it, I could go in here and update it. And Speaking of that, I'm going to go in here. I think I've left. Nope. I just have my callback token in here. I was just checking to see if I had left my OpenAI key in there. But this is where you go to get that information. And obviously, there is my token for the system, which I will reset after the video. So now we're going to go back into templates. And we've already created this into a node. And we can see here that it shows up at the top as being in use by the Sturgeon node. And then we're going to add it to a pipeline. And we're just going to call this demo for the purposes of this video. And we have a callback now in here. And we have a URL that we can send data to. So you can see here there's some data that's Im embedded in the curl call. So I'm going to hop over into my terminal, which is Hyper, that I'm running on the Mac. And I'm going to submit that. I'm going to get back a task response immediately. Uh, those task responses re represent jobs that run on the system. And then those tasks or jobs show up in the task tab when they run. I've already got the logs back because it's real quick doing that. And we can see here that it contains the information that I submitted to the pipeline. The next step is to create a template that uses a um, AI to generate some content. So. We have a couple of them that we've created here. So they're in the cookbooks tab here. And I think I want to go in and generate a pirate chat from texts. This is just an example. You can change any of these to suit whatever use case you're going after. But in this particular case, um, 
we've got uh, a pirate standing on a beach of an island, and it's got some objects visible. Now, what I want to do is I want to use this template, and so I'm going to change the scene director's content to remove the objects from this because we don't have any objects yet. We're going to need to generate some objects using this template. So I'm going to delete the um, objects definitions. And so I'm going to just delete all of those. And we're, we're going to be acting as the native on the island. So the scene director is going to say, there is a n native of the island that the pirate is on, standing here. The native looks at the pirate and says words, and the pirate adjusts his hat and says. So we need the pirate, though, to explain what he's looking at. So uh, we want... And we want to do this so that we can generate some interesting content, and we also want it to generate some objects that the pirate and the native are looking at. So we want to say something like, the pirate adjusts his hat and says, I see the following, uh, or hello. Actually, we don't say, the pirate, sit, uh, the pirate adjusts his hat and greets the native, and then mentions the a few items of interest in the scene um but not the native themselves as the pirate is talking to the talking to the native so I think that will probably work, but we're just going to give it a shot and we're going to see what happens. That's the whole idea with templates is if we want to just play around with them and see what's going on. So let's click on save. We're going to be given an overview. So we're going to input words and we're going to output assistant content. So we're going to click on the template again or we're going to click on create node. It's going to prompt me for my open AI token. So I'm going to grab that off screen and I'm going to paste it in. And I'm going to add this to the demo pipeline. Now I'm going to drag this in front of the callback processor and then click on save. I'm going to go ahead and copy this again because we changed what we're passing in. And I'm going to say, why, hello, pirate. Would you like a coconut? We're going to jump back over and we're going to see that the task is running and it's already output to the logs. So then here's the reply. R, well, blow me down. A native greeting this whole pirate with a coconut would be parched. A coconut just be the thing. But listen here, matey, my eyes spy something more than just a kind offer. I see there a hidden treasure buried deep within this island. It says it's guarded by a fearsome beast. Only, as, okay, well, so we've got some stuff in here and, um, We've got some good content. So this is the, the text we're, we were looking to generate. And so what we want to do now is we want to take that text and we want to transform it into some objects. So we're going to go back into templates. We're going to click on create template and we're going to scroll back down to the pirate thoughts template. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. What we actually need to do here is generate key terms from the text. So this is a little bit different processor than the chat processor. It's the AI dick processor. And what it does is it looks at text and it extracts key terms from it. So it says here, inspect falling text and other chunks. And I believe this is assist, assistant content. So we want everything that says chunks here to say assistant content. And that's key terms. And maybe we want to call this objects.
this will put in this value five into this prompt whenever it's passed into the hey I or to the large language model. We just want to make sure that we're changing all these so that it's very clear about it. And then we're going to click on save. So I'm just checking this. So it's going to output objects and strings. The assistant content is strings. And it's got a number of objects. All right, so we're going to go in back into the template and cr click create node. And we're going to add it to the pipeline. Once again, we're going to drag it to the middle and then click on save. And then we're going to rerun this. And it's done, so let's go in and see if it extracted the objects. So number of objects is set to five, and here's the list of objects. So coconut, palm trees, treasure chest, gold doubloons, precious jewels. Okay, so now that we have assistant content, let's take a look at what this assistant content says. And it's similar, but a little bit different, so that's good. It's, it's, it's hallucinating all this, basically. It's synthesizing it. So we're going to go back in, and we need one final template for dealing with the objects to be able to create an image of the scene. So we want to go in and select the generate pirate thoughts from a chat and objects. And here we have the objects and then the words, and this is assistant content. And the output fields is going to be prompts. Then the reason why it's prompts is because we're going to send this to an AI image generator. And that says, you are a pirate's visual consciousness voice. You write prompts such that the pirate may visualize the scene. And consider the following items are visible to the pirate types. Uh, a native of the island and then the objects. And here, the objects is... We're, we're referencing the first array in an array of objects. So it's an array of array of strings, essentially. So what we're saying here is we just want the first list of objects. And that'll pop out in PyCon format in this template. It doesn't matter much because the, the LLM will handle this. And then the pirate is just use their audio conscious to speak. Uh, so that's what the pirate just said, which is what we read just a second ago or an example of it. And then we're telling it to write a detail prompt describing the scene such as can be rendered by a dolly processor. So we're going to click on save. We're going to go over it. So we're outputting objects as a string set, which is a list of a list of strings. And we have, um, or the, I, should, I should say inputs. And then we're inputting assistant content and we're outputting prompts. So we're going to click on the template name again and then click on create node. And it's going to create this for me. It already had my OpenAI token because I entered it earlier, so it used it in here. Uh, we never return tokens once they're sent into the system that are secured and not returned to the user ever. So if you want to change your OpenAI token, you're going to settings and delete the token that's there and add a new one. So then we're going to add this to the demo pipeline. And again, we're going to drag it in front of this. And then we're going to click on save. And we're going to take a look at the flow here. So we're going to input words, which are going to come from us through the post. It's going to output assistant content. It's going to input assistant content and output the objects that it noted that were in the, the content. And then we're going to take in the objects and the assistant content, and we're going to output a prompt. So we're going to click on where it clicked on save there. So we're going to go back over and we're going to call it again. If I need to debug any of this, I can always go in here and I can grab the callback processor or add another one and slide it in front of the last processor that ran successfully to help debug what's going on. So errors will pop out sometimes in tasks, and that just means it gives you something to go fix inside your template. So it'll give you a detailed description of what went wrong so you can go in there and fix it. So we have logs now, so we're going to click on logs 
and we want to look at the prompt since it is the pirate. Yep, so we have a good prompt here. So this is a great prompt. And so what we want to do now is we want to go in and create the last template, which is to generate an image from the text. And we're taking in prompts as strings, and we're outputting that as a URL or a URI that, and this should be strings. We've been going back and forth about this, but this is a string um, or should output strings. And the type of that is strings because even though it's a URL, it's inside quotes, so it's string. And then it's going to prompt us for the number of images, which we're just going to want one image. And it's going to use our OpenAI token and the Dolly 3 prompt or model, I should say. So now we're going to go in and we're going to create a note from this. And it's asking us for the number of images. We just want one image. And then we're going to add it to the pipeline. We're going to drag that in front of the callback processor so that we can get the URL out. And then we're going to call it one final time. And hopefully it gets us a good image. So now we can see that the pipeline's running. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and go over into log stab. And here's our URL. So let's take a look at what it says here. It says pirate stands on a pish, pish, picturesque island surrounded by breathtaking natural beauty. Okay, well, that's right. So let's look at the picture. Well, I guess that's, that's a pretty good picture, but um, I think... I think I'd rather see, like, everybody involved, and I, I really want to see that native. Um, so we're going to run this again, and let's just, let's just run it again and see what happens. I suppose we could say something different. That's one thing we could do here. We could, we could edit this part. Let's, get, let's generate a couple of them. Um, Want a cocoa nut, Mr. Pirate? Tell me what you are seeing and be sure to include me in your thoughts. Okay, so we've got the other one. The other one's running, so both of them are running. We could also tell it to generate different numbers of images instead of running it separately, but we change the prompt, so. Remember, we can use um, those template variables inside of the things that you send in as well. So if you send in data, then that'll also be templated with the different variables that are available. So we've got one back. Let's, boy, that's... Pretty detailed, so let's look at the URL. It's jumping around a little bit. There we go. Huh. Yeah. It's about right. Flying ships. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, well, <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so the, sometimes this stuff just cracks me up. Um, so, the, yeah. The pig? No thanks, Chrome. Wow, that's awesome. That's fantastic. I love it. The ship is still in the air. That's great. Okay, well, so that, that turned out pretty well. So uh, I'll put this pipeline up. I don't think that uh, we've put this particular type of pipeline up before, but we'll get it up. We have another one where it's pirate bot. And so this would be more something that's responding to someone as a pirate and generating images for him. Uh, kind of interesting, interesting use. But remember, Meta AI is, is useful for a lot of different types of AI tasks and really the, the ability to bring different types of documents together in different ways through the large language models allows you to explore some really interesting workflows as related to enterprise data, 
personal data, um, entertainment data, generation of content and uh, use for entertainment or storytelling, even storytelling about your systems of work, for example, making things more interesting. So I am really glad you came in and watched me today. I had a lot of fun doing this video, and I'm really looking forward to doing more of these and getting into the uh, different things I can do with it. It's My mind is just sort of like filled with all sorts of ideas. So I'm looking forward to it, y'all. Bye.